Fairly recently, the local society had a display of roses. People came and looked at the roses, but not a lot of questions came from spectators. I heard a few people say something along the lines of, Oh, I wish I grew that. Or, These roses make me want to grow roses. I did hear a few comments like, I can't grow roses, though. So I asked around both of the display and other people. Here are some of the reasons and what I would have given or have given as feedback that people don't grow roses in no particular order. And I understand that each person's reasons are unique to them and that there are going to be reasons why my feedback to them in this video may not be applicable. Thorns. That can definitely be a problem. There are roses that have fewer thorns than others, but in the long run, I agree with the sentiment of being thankful that thorns have roses. The work involved. This is where I'm probably going to go against the mainstream idea of rose growing. And I get why people think that there is a lot of work, or even too much work involved. And yes, growing roses can take a lot of work. I think that it depends on the purpose for what you're growing the roses. Are you growing roses to show in competition? Then yeah, there's going to be a lot of work that you have to do. Are you growing roses for you to enjoy? For you to put on your dinner table? For you to give to family and friends? Then my answer to those questions is that it doesn't require as much work as you might think. Uh, roses do take water, and my yard of 60-ish roses, watering is the longest task that I do. The closest thing I do to deadheading most of the time is when I'm cutting the flowers for either making cuttings, using for my daughter's and wife's hair, bringing to work, or giving them to someone. I do some pruning, but it's usually just to remove dead growth. That's it. I don't spray, and in my garden only one of my roses has much of a problem with black spot. And yes, Missouri is a humid and hot climate. Yes, I have roses that should be susceptible to black spot, they just don't have it in my yard. Or at least not to a point that it's worth me or doing anything about it. The time. I would say that if time is a reason that it is stopping you from growing roses, what is the work involved that you have heard about in growing the the roses? If you're talking to a competitive rose grower, then yes, they're going to make it sound like a job to take care of the roses. If you're just wanting to grow roses for yourself, then I would suggest by starting small. One, two bushes and give the care that they need, such as watering, removing dead growth, and go from there. If the issue is that your schedule is packed and you can't fit it in, I'd ask, do you have a garden of some sort, veggie, annual flower bed? If so, then why not plant a rose or two in that garden and spend 30 seconds on the rose while you're in the garden already? Cost. Have you priced a rose lately? They are expensive. Or they can be. There are rose nurseries out there that are reasonably priced, under $25 per plant. There's also bare roses in the big box stores that are usually around the $15 price tag. With those, you should be aware that what you think you're going getting may be different than what the rose actually is. I've also seen local nurseries sell roses for under $20. At a local, to me, nursery, they sell wild rose plants for under 10 some stores nurseries have end of season sales that you can get roses for cheaper than growing uh, season prices as well one way to get roses for relatively cheap is to go on social media and see if you can buy some there if you have friends that grow roses you can ask if they're willing to give you a cutting or two or possibly sell you a rude cutting make sure that the rose isn't a rose that's under patent though But getting the rose plant isn't the only expense to roses. There's a soil amendment, the fertilizer, the pesticides. Or is there? Again, for what reason are you growing your roses? In my yard, the only type of soil amending that I do is empty the lawnmower bag in one of my my beds. That is also the only type of fertilizers that my roses get. I'm fine with bug holes in the leaves, so I don't use insecticides. Or aphids, I use my fingers to squish them or spray them off with water. In my experience of from past growing roses, um, I found that roses can and do just fine with having black spot. I had a rose bush that was completely black come midsummer, but it bloomed and grew perfectly fine. I haven't had to deal with downy mildew, but I'm sure that if I did, then I would use a fungicide. 
Powdery mildew, for me, seems to go away by an increase of water both to the plant and by spraying water on the mildew itself. I've had roses in this yard in Missouri and have had roses in past yards in, in Georgia and Oregon using the same growing technique. I've had roses get 10 feet or taller, 10 feet wide, um, so I've had success. Another thing is don't like or no desire or boring. I would ask, what about roses don't you like? Find boring or have no desire in. Is it the perception of roses? Then just treat them as regular plant. Is it the fact that a lot of them are some version of pink or red? There are other colors, such as orange, yellow, and purple. Um, also, roses do come in striped versions as well. With a lack of desire, is it because you've never been around roses? Another uh, pushback is lack of no, the know-how. Well, there are several ways to work on this. There are books, blogs, and YouTube channels that you can find. With books, it may be wise to check out your library section to see if the book is helpful in your yard than buying it and find out that it doesn't help you. There are several blogs out there touching on roses and how to take care of them. And you can find the blog by searching Google. There are YouTube channels that talk about roses and their care that you, and that you can subscribe to. You can even find a local rose society and go to their meetings. Even possibly become a member. If there's a local rose garden or botanical garden, you can go and see if you can talk to the people who take care of the roses there. If you see a house while you're out and about and that has a few roses, you can talk to the homeowner and see if you can get any information from them. If you have any friends or family that grow roses, you can talk to them as well. Another one would be property restrictions, such as apartments, HOA guidelines, and space. This one may be one of the tougher reasons. Um, if you're in an apartment, you may have no access to being able to grow anything outside, like a porch or a balcony. Uh, maybe talk to the apartment management and see if they will let you grow a bush in a pot outside the building. With the HOA, re are the restrictions for the front yard only or the entire property? Can you grow roses in a pot outside the back door? The space can be an issue because you may not be able to grow a uh, big rose. However, there are miniature roses and other roses that stay compact and may not be taller than two feet tall and two feet wide. Animal issues, which could be dogs, deer, rabbits, etc. Exclusion of the animals may be the best way to go. By that, I mean put a physical barrier like a fence. Um, or I've heard people using fencing material and attaching them to tree stakes making individual fence or cage around the bush until the plant gets bigger. Uh, maybe with dogs, you can train them to stay away from your roses. Uh, there are also scent and sound repellents, which you can use as well. Another issue could be that people believe that roses don't grow in shade. Having had past yards that I've fit over 100 rose bushes in, that I've had 10 oak trees, mature oak trees, and at least five ma mature maple trees growing in, I can attest that, yeah, roses do can and do grow in shade. Um, I, For example, I had one bush in Georgia where it got close to 14 by 14 feet wide and bloomed every year prolifically, so much so that I would, you wouldn't tell that I could take flowers from it. Um, in general, though, I would... If you're growing roses in shade, I would expect them to be lankier plants than compared to those in the sun. Uh, they probably will bloom less often as well. But keep in mind, roses do grow in shade. A variety of knowledge of uh, types of roses, such as shrubs versus bedding. A rose is a rose, right? Mm, not quite. Um, there are different characteristics to different roses. If you're wanting something to bloom all season long, then you're not going to want to grow a once-blooming rose. If you want the old-fashioned blooms, then you're going to want to steer away from a tea, hybrid teas, floribundas, and grandifloras. There are classes of roses and two large groups of roses that the classes fit into, old garden and modern garden roses. Again, there are books, YouTube channels, Rose societies, plant nurseries, friends, family that can help you with what grows well in your area. Um, it's not always the best to go to a big box store and get the rose that is the most common in supply. 
Um, the last one that I'm going to cover is, I'm going to call it Mystique of Growing Roses, or you have to be an accomplished gardener to do it. This is probably the point that frustrates me the most. The reason why is because in reality, if you're wanting them in your yard for you, they don't take much work than any other plant to take care of them. I mean, how much time do you spend mowing your grass? If you take some of the grass out and plant roses, you're more than likely to have saved yourself some time. If you have a vegetable garden or an annual garden, how much time do you maintain that? You roses might actually take less time. I'm not advocating not to grow veggies, but uh, the mystique part is something that I've talked to people in rose societies and other places before. I'm not sure that the, even they understand. And I think part of what rose societies do add to that mystique of the rose. For example, the local rose society had a um, display instead of a show because there was no judges. Um, but for all intents and purposes, with the roses being in glass jars and having signs for classes and that kind of stuff, and the members were going around grooming the flowers, to an outsider, it would look like you would go see a show. I don't believe that the average person who grows roses, or would like to, would look at that rose display and feel encouraged to grow roses because their roses may not look like that. The mystique about roses and being an accomplished gardener kind of gives off an elitist feel to growing roses. Kind of like a, I made it to the top of gardening. I don't think it has to be that way. I think that as rose growers talking to people who are starting out or trying to get people to grow roses, we can be a lot more lenient on things like bugs or fungus or some diseases, not rose rosette. Um, but, uh, that way people don't feel like you have to be a born rose grower to do it. So I guess I would say that I would encourage everyone to go out and grow roses, enjoy them for what they are, and don't let them stress be a stress in your life, and be thankful that thorns have roses.